scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to you attain. See, Thank you. When new converts or those who just get born again, if and when they are not discipled, eventually the gaps in their spiritual understanding and the fact that the flesh is so alive will make them easy praise for the devil to come into partnership with their unrenewed minds and cause a lot of trouble first in the body of Christ and then by extension in society. Are we together? This is very, very important. When new converts are not discipled, they will eventually become problems first to the church and then to the larger community let me tell you this every national problem please look up every national problem was first a regional problem that was not managed properly every regional problem was once upon a time a family problem that was not managed effectively and every family problem was once an individual problem you see how nations are destroyed so an individual who is not discipled creates trouble in a family that is not discipled creates trouble in a society or a region that is not discipled eventually that individual will constitute a nuisance to not only family not only society but to the nation and even the continent at large most of the people today that trouble civilization trouble the peace and tranquility of territories all of them come from home and they did not just evolve into troublemakers of all kinds individuals when they are saved and their understanding is not so constructed especially for believers they may have given their lives to christ but we know that just giving your life to christ this is entry into the kingdom Imagine with me, for instance, that a woman gives birth to a baby and throws the baby down. Most often than not, that child will most likely be a hooligan or will be a troublemaker eventually. Why? Because the opportunity to have proper parenting upbringing is not there. You can, you can solve the problem of a nation very easily if you understand the dynamics on, of how problems are created they first start at an individual level then if left unchecked and not dealt with they graduate into problems in families then from families when those individuals are now sent from those families they become troubles to society communities and to regions and if left unchecked they will rise to become national people who multiply the same problem and these are the kinds of conditions that demon spirits look for they look for individuals with no platform for discipleship they look for families with no codes of conduct no modus operandi anything just happens they look for territories that are lawless they look for nations with no law this is how people are destroyed it is very easy to destroy a nation it is very easy to destroy a family it is very easy to destroy a territory all you need to do is ignore discipleship 
at an individual level just let people do anything they want to do unchecked for a while it will look like they know what they are doing until you begin to see the damage to the family to territory to society and to the nation are we together so at the heart of transformation is discipleship that is it if we want to change this nation we want to change africa we must obtain grace and wisdom from god to get back into the subject of methodical mentorship discipleship at least for a start we can start with younger believers this has been a mistake that most people have made respectfully speaking especially those in the mission field we focus so much about soul winning missions and that is wonderful but there is no system to manage these people when they are saved at best we just tell them go to this church and when they get to the church if the church does not have a structure a teaching priest to now begin to help those people they are in trouble because when those people sit there the flesh wants to find expression and because there is no system to keep dealing with it i tell you eventually you are going to see all shades of trouble the headache that the man of god will go through because of people that are saved and they just pile them into the church no growth no development and this is how you keep having all this trouble everywhere are we blessed this is not my sermon no this is a burden let me just offload that one then we'll get to the sermon for tonight are we together discipleship therefore is the foundation for true and lasting transformation in individuals families institutions and nations let me repeat myself discipleship therefore by reason of the aforementioned discipleship therefore is the foundation for true and lasting transformation in individuals comma families institutions and nations we must restore the system of discipleship my second thought are you ready for the second one to be uninformed i wrote here is bad but to be misinformed is worse to be uninformed is bad ignorance is a terrible thing at any level to be uninformed is bad but to be misinformed is worst please write it and look up this is very true to be uninformed is very bad ignorance is terrible it can cost you a lot including your life but the more serious trouble is to be misinformed when you meet someone who is ignorant the person does not necessarily need renewal the person just needs information that produces transformation is that true but when you meet someone who is ill-informed or misinformed you need renewal first before you now begin the journey of transformation someone who has not begun a journey he does not need to turn back you just need to direct the person to the right place and he fires on but one who has veered off so far he will need to come back to that point before you now point him to the right direction this lead this leads me to this next point we must examine the content the content of our doctrines and the content we use to mentor people because i have spoken now about the need for discipleship but there are many people who are in trouble today because they submitted to discipleship they submitted to discipleship but the content was inaccurate largely unscriptural so in as much as we advocate discipleship to help people most people you only train people from from the residue of your own philosophies and your own ideologies and if your ideology is wrong as an individual as a parent as a man of god 
you will communicate that error to people now let me tell you this sincerity does not necessarily mean truthfulness just because people are sincere does not mean that they are right most of the error and the trouble the imbalances that come they come from sincere people especially the one that comes from we preachers we may be sincere and so most people believe those information in honor to the sincerity of the man of god not the truthfulness of the content i can i can teach a lie i can teach something that is imbalanced or false and just because you perceive me to be a sincere people a, a sincere person in honor to my sincerity you will now swallow up the error that i'm teaching i may be sincere but it does not automatically mean that what i'm saying is right more than sincerity we must obtain grace from god to seek truth what delivers is not sincerity he says ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free many sincere people are destroying the purposes of god many sincere people are destroying god's divine patterns and divine order so in addition to sincerity which is commendable we must press for truth the content of our mentorship must be scriptural it must be balanced it must be communicated with intention and intelligence to be able to raise and build a people of stature otherwise we'll keep having these shades of lopsidedness spiritual lopsidedness so two burdens tonight one is that at the back of every transformation national transformation regional family is the need for mentorship everybody here comes from a family many people here are parents we can start by being intentional don't just allow people do what they want to do allow children do what they do i know that we live in times where you know people just have their ideas but you see this bible is our manual for a life of victory let god be true and all men liars hallelujah praise the lord i prepared a powerful sermon i'm waiting for the day god will grant me grace to teach it i look forward to teaching it in a men's meeting or teaching it so let me give you a teaser it's on inheritance what exactly is an inheritance that's the teaser everybody will eventually hear it but there, there it was designed for fathers husbands leaders men so when the bible says a good man leaves an inheritance what does the bible say to leave because many of what we leave that we call inheritance is not inheritance show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter so the moment you find out that you are ignorant in an area and you are searching for light your first assignment is not a reception your first assignment is verification what i'm about to open my heart to is it truth indeed it takes a lot of time to submit yourself to knowledge it also takes a lot of time to undo the wrong that you have learned my greatest prayer as a man of god is not just for signs and wonders and miracles and the prophetic is that i do not teach god's people a lie and cause nations and millions of people to believe a lie and then after 10 20 years i now realize is the truth then i change alone and leave the people to suffer Are we together?
so i remain committed by the privilege of god's grace to make sure that the truths that we hear and the truths that come from this altar are truths that are true indeed scriptural life applicable mysteries of the kingdom that will all together build the believer spiritually and then in every other sense this is why we are here the day we fail in this assignment there is no need for you to come here again because we'll be wasting your time that anytime you come and what you hear are not life applicable truths sound from scripture doctrinally balanced and communicated with intelligence there is no need doing any church again every other thing that is left is religion the greatest honor to your time and your sacrifice while you sit here people come right from you know whatever time the greatest honor is to make sure that we as ministers of the gospel do our best within the the boundary of the grace that has been given to us we ourselves are students in the school of the spirit but you see the this is where the mystery of the body of christ comes so that the dimension you do not see clearly if you sustain the humility of heart there is another angle to it that can help you to find balance hallelujah praise the lord now for the word tonight please pray in one minute lord grant me grace open my eyes to the mystery that will come from heaven my life is about to change in the name of jesus my destiny is about to be transformed truth is coming to me it says ride prosperously because of truth hallelujah tonight i bring you a mystery that will transform your life in no small way i bring you a kingdom truth that has been responsible for the enviable rising and excelling of men in the kingdom remember the lord gave an instruction and for those of you who are just connecting today we are teaching truths that relates to the graces that are at work in this house to the end that we become partakers of this grace through light through knowledge more than just impartation of anointing the knowledge that sponsors the coming and the staying and even the multiplication of those graces is what we've been dispensing are we together now so impartation is almost useless when there is no knowledge base to receive that that power when you just lay hands on people or just transfer anointings it's like pouring water in a cup that has a hole or pouring water on the ground it may not stay knowledge spiritual illumination becomes a container that receives that impartation that way it will stay and it will not only stay it will multiply are we together praise the lord this is one of the secrets that god taught me i have watched it in the life of great people i have seen it in the bible i have watched those who violated this principle pay for it i have watched people who honored this principle rise and it is my prayer and my sincere desire tonight that god will find somebody in this place who will place value on this mystery and that you will rise in a way that will surprise you in the name of jesus christ the lifting power of true humility write it down please the lifting power of true humility i want to share with you a very deep mystery tonight please pay attention don't allow anyone distract you our global family avoid any distraction and just settle down with jesus and let us learn the ways of the kingdom let's access the keys and the mysteries that are responsible for extraordinary supernatural growth supernatural increase in this kingdom hallelujah the lifting power of true humility the goal of this discussion tonight is to connect believers to and with the grace for lifting by exposing the danger of pride and revealing to you from scripture the character and the excellency of a life of true humility 
praise the name of the Lord. Three scriptures and we'll, be going, we'll begin our discussion tonight. James chapter 4 and verse 6. James chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says, but he giveth more grace. Everyone say more grace. more grace. He giveth more grace. The first information here is that whatever God gives you, he can give you more of it. That whatever God gives you is not the last level that he intends to give. Everything God gives is a seed that can be multiplied. Everything God gives, there is more of it. When God gives you wisdom, there can be more wisdom. When God gives you power, there can be more power. When God lifts you, there can be more lifting. So the first information, he giveth more. He giveth more. More membership. More revelation more financial resources more wisdom more of his ability to keep you long we call it longevity whatever comes from god that is given to you is not the last of it that he can give he giveth more grace he giveth more grace this is a powerful information that means anything that i need more of in my life the Bible gives me a consolation that I can find more of it. There is a possibility for having more of everything that you currently have. There is a possibility for transiting beyond the current realm that you now occupy. Spiritually, financially, physically, in leadership, in influence, etc. Are we together? He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, who is the he talking? The one who gives the more grace whatever the owner of anything is saying you pay attention to it if you really want it so the giver of this more grace says god resisted the proud but he gives grace so first information he gives more grace second information he tells you the candidate he gives that more grace to are we together now he giveth more grace wherefore he saith god resisted the proud but he giveth more grace in any case both the proud and the humble have something that comes from god to them are you seeing it now proud people have some they have something that comes to them from god the bible says resistance god can bring resistance to a man's life and then the bible says for the humble he brings more grace second scripture philippians chapter 2 and verse 3 philippians 2 and verse 3 let me read very quickly let nothing be done it says through strife or vain glory very interesting expression let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves let me repeat it one more time let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves very self-explanatory very clear that nothing be done in strife or vain glory but in lowliness it tells you that anything is truly profitable when it is done in lowliness of mind last scripture first peter chapter 5 and verse 6 the apostle is teaching now first peter chapter 5 and verse 6 here's what he says humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god why that he may exalt you someone say exaltation one more time say exaltation it says humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time let's begin our discussion i want to start with a concept that i call the the deceitfulness of pride let's examine the subject of pride exactly is pride and why is it such a serious issue in my life and in your life why do we have to 
battle and wrestle with this concept this idea of pride where did it come from why is pride you know negative habits but this pride thing it seems to have a bulldog strength that holds on to I like us to deal with the subject of pride spiritual dimension and then the second the psychological dimension because when it has to do with pride demon spirits come to fortify a belief system so that they cause you to remain in that state you see there for that spirit to be fruitful in the life of its victim as with the manifestation of all other spirits the Lord at all is condition dependent including the Holy Spirit no spirit can veto into man and just begin to carry out activities of that spirit pride is one of them if you're together say amen. amen hallelujah the bible talks about the idea of pride and how deadly and how dangerous it is phil talks about pride it always connects it with destruction it always connects it with folly it always connects it with all kinds of things there is no mention of pride and lifting together there is no mention of pride and increase together from genesis to revelation every time the bible mentions pride either directly in scripture or through the similitude of a story or in parable the ones who are victims of that pride if there is no repentance and there is no brokenness and conversion they will always end up worse than the story started with them pride a killer a destroyer of many destinies today many destinies have not only remained at that level but gone down shamefully so for many because of this danger of pride are we together now i want to just delve a bit into a concept of the human nature let's discuss a bit on psychology and then i'll get back to my teaching this is very important you cannot truly truly understand pride until you understand the human nature please pay attention we're here to learn the church of god is an institution of learning scriptural context but we borrow fields of study and intelligence to help give credence to what we're discussing are we together now many believers Think that all it takes to being free from some of these things is just knowing that God delivers and God sets free you have to understand pride from a psychological dimension what why do people fall victim of this thing that the Bible calls pride you must understand the reality of the human nature please follow me very carefully as we open up ourselves to ourselves to understand what is the motivation behind the activities that we do hallelujah I studied this years ago and it changed my life and I had the honor of looking through it again whilst preparing for this note now every human being the Bible tells us that man is tripartite in expression man is a spirit the Bible says and that spirit lives in a body and connecting that spirit and body is a faculty that we call the mind is that true that the spirit in partnership with the mind is what you call a soul are we together now yes and that the mind of of man has three compartments psychologists tell us and even the bible attests to that the will emotions and intellect and that all of these faculties of expression help to they help man to to interact with this duality of realms that even though man is in the physical he can interact with the realm of the spirit or any realm above the three-dimensional realm by the means of these faculties if the mind were to be taken away from the man there will be a disconnect between the body and the spirit and we know that the body is merely an instrument of execution is that true the body does not have a will on its own religion agrees to that science agrees to that the body in itself does not have any power to execute that is the reason why when a spirit leaves a body that body lies lifeless 
and begins to deteriorate and begins to decompose because it has no life and power on its own the body is merely a biological instrument that executes realities that have been agreed upon the spirit through the faculties of the mind this is very important you have to understand that men are not just spirits please listen men are not just spirits they interact with this realm through the mind that means there is a psychological composition to every man born of a woman there is a psychological composition to every man born of a woman now across several colleges universities there have been all kinds of psychologists who have done all kinds of research work on man this entity called man they have approached it from a sociological standpoint they have approached it from a religious standpoint they have approached it from a biological standpoint and attempts to unravel this entity called man to be able to study what it is that is responsible for some of the ills that happen to men and so different people have written all kinds of dissertations uh, in an attempt to contribute to this knowledge and one of them would be would take for reference just one of them a behavioral psychologist a professor called abraham maslow abraham harold maslow and he was a behavioral psychologist he was a professor of psychology and he lived from 1908 to 1970 he postulated a theory called the theory of motivation that eventually brought what we have known in the psychology world today as the hierarchy of needs abraham maslow he brought the hierarchy of needs it was an attempt to describe human behavior he wanted to describe the motivation behind the activities of men on earth so that he would now be able to help us make sense of why men do what they do why men act the way they act why men go where they go are we together now this was a very very successful work because it helped to frame intelligence businesses today run on these principles their understanding of human psychology has helped them to build products help them to build all kinds of platforms based on this so we're going to look at it very briefly he postulated a theory of the theory of um, needs the hierarchy of needs i meant to say this is very important the theory of motivation and from it came the hierarchy of needs i wouldn't dwell so much i just want to give us um, a basic understanding now there are all kinds of intelligent people here intellectuals and um, i'm not speaking as a professor or authority i was just a good student who studied some of this in an attempt to prepare a message and preach i have to put that disclaimer we live in a world that is very civilized now so please understand that i'm not teaching as any authority with any qualification around psychology we are interacting with the whole world i am merely a student who as an attempt in an attempt to make sure that i help my people understand the gospel and this dimension i delved into that understanding to bring forth something is that true that will help you relate to it so this is very important thank you hallelujah but then you can trust what i'm saying because they are not my ideas this is well researched by god's grace we are serious people we are very serious people in the name of jesus christ now please media help me i i gave the media an assignment if you can project this a little this is a pyramid that was a representation of maslow's maslow's hierarchy of needs it was an attempt to show the motivation behind human behavior from the greatest to the least that means that all men are driven by these factors right there at the base of the pyramid we have the greatest need of man he calls it psychological needs another word for it is basic needs so at the base of the pyramid the largest part of the pyramid for those of you who i hope that you're seeing it is wide and clear enough but just to touch on them he says that all men the urgency that men express in their lives is primarily to be able to achieve their 
psychological or basic needs first that means in order of priority a dying man is not looking for real estate a dying man is looking for air to breathe when he can breathe air then he needs water when he finds water he can now find food is that true when he can now find food he now realizes he's naked and he wants clothes are you seeing now in that order of priority if he has clothes he now realizes that he needs shelter so he's saying that in order of priority the man who is looking for a house if you strip that man naked the issue of house becomes a non-issue he tries to cover his nakedness are we together now if that man who is naked is so thirsty to the point of death he will not mind nakedness again because the thirst becomes a priority is that true and the man who is hungry and thirsty if something happens and he's going to be starved of air he does not mind hunger he first wants to leave so abraham maslow was saying that there is a motivation behind human needs all men their first need is the basic need or the psychological need i will show you how this connects to pride psychological needs or basic needs include the biological requirements for human survival that is the first most important need in the flesh now of every man the need for air the need for water the need for food the need for shelter the need for sleep the need for clothing all of these things come under the basic needs by basic there it means they are foundational and any other thing can fail but this men will kill to make sure they have this men will fight one another to make sure they have this are we together quickly let's go to the second part of the pyramid in ascending order the second you see it from there is called safety needs that means when your basic needs are met and you don't have a problem with food again you don't have a problem with shelter you don't have a problem with um sleep or clothing your needs your motivation now increases your next need becomes your safety needs security and safety now becomes your priority people now want to experience control predictability and order in their lives so you now start thinking of employment you now start thinking of your health you now start thinking of personal security there are people today who are not thinking of employment they are thinking survival there are people today who are not thinking health it's amazing how that as we grow once upon a time in my life i would never think about health to stay healthy avoid this food i mean the, the issue is to make sure that you eat well and you are happy but there is a level you get to where that is solved now you have to need a gym now you have to need a gym instructor to help you manage your health why because those needs are right is that true they now tell you avoid this avoid that avoid that for the sake of your health so the next need is your safety need you want control and predictive nobody just comes to waste your life now if you have this in place the third part of the pyramid please let's hurry up the third is called esteem okay um okay this one says belongingness and love needs i call it love and acceptance needs isn't it amazing it starts with basic needs you don't want to die once you've solved that then you now move to security needs once security needs are in place the next is now the need for love and acceptance we call them social needs generally the need to feel loved the need to feel accepted so now you begin to pay attention to relationships friendships family and you now want to connect to groups all kinds of groups and clubs and societies because you want that sense of belonging you want that sense of acceptance notice the ascension that the basic and most desperate of your need is to eat sleep once that is solved the needs increase the need for security and safety once that is solved the next need is the need for love and acceptance through relationships and all kinds of platforms the moment that is solved then now please look up this is where trouble begins in your life this is a very powerful representation most of the, the first second and third doesn't create so much trouble in your life real trouble starts from the fourth part of the, the pyramid It's called esteem needs the fourth part of the pyramid is called esteem needs what does that mean the need 
for the esteem for oneself and the need to find respect from others what you call reputation reputation is a description of people's perception of you at this point now you are not looking for your basic needs again your security needs have been met your social needs have also been met the next thing that is left is your ego and your reputation before yourself and before men this is where trouble starts you need to understand this so that as you are training people in leadership in your company in ministry understand that they are growing a time will come if you do not know how to manage this you are going to be in trouble because a time will come the people you are raising will not need food again the people in your company the staff may have started as maybe even a security person somewhere opening and closing the gate but eventually as they begin to rise you see that their needs and their priorities shift many parents do not understand the transitions in the behavior of their children now if you understand this you see the way your child behaves if he's receiving school fees from you it's not the same way your child behaves now if he's earning a scholarship of hundreds of thousands of naira or dollars you see that the priorities change maslow helped us to put this thing in perspective let's look very quickly esteem needs at this point people begin to want independence and they begin to pay attention to achievement what gives you fulfillment at this level is not eating well it's not driving a car you want to achieve goals and then you want a sense of independence you do not want to be under the hold of anybody or anything are we still together shout amen, amen. i assume your silence is that you are really understanding the thing and you're allowing it to absorb into your spirit esteem needs at this point you begin to be sensitive to everything titles sensitive to recognition sensitive to who says what remember the five-year-old version of you before that time the ten-year-old version of you before that time has no business there are people here today their concern is simply to come and hear the gospel press into christ that it doesn't matter whether they are wearing an oversized cloth or not it doesn't matter whether what they are wearing is torn or not because according to maslow the need for survival they are at the basic level now let the word keep coming the word keeps translating you as you are getting results what happens eventually you will leave the first pass of the pyramid you will now rise to safety needs I'm tired of staying in a house with five or six or ten people. I think I need my own place now. Security and safety. Is that true? Yes. Esteem needs. The need for independence. The need for status. The need for prestige. This is why people join all kinds of clubs and societies. This is why people begin to come up with all kinds of things that help to concretize the, their relevance relevance and status and prestige and reputation are the key words at this level and then the fifth is called self-actualization needs self-actualization needs the need for fulfillment and the need for legacy for instance when you see someone who is at age 80 or 90 notice how everything reverses at age 80 or 90 the gentleman does not care again or the man the old man does not care whether his hair is combed he does not care whether he zips his trouser he does not care whether the buttons are in place he sits with you and says young man let me teach you something 45 years ago this is what happened and while you are looking at him it will be foolish of you as a young man to look at the person and say sorry the you're, you're putting this shoe is supposed to be this way and he says so that is what your focus is on because at that level it is legacy his pride is not what he does with himself or to himself again his pride is the people that he's able to raise that become instruments of continuity notice how this transition happens in your life if you flog your child male or female your teenage child especially in the presence of anyone that is a huge embarrassment you would have taught something but you see an adult who fall down on the road 
and stand up and dust himself like nothing happened because he's looking for a job he has three children and he needs to sort things out that shame that he used to have as a little boy has gone because of other needs and other serious priorities abraham mashlow final recap and we'll get back to the teaching arranged in order of priority ascending order psychological or basic needs and then safety needs love and acceptance needs esteem needs self-actualization needs praise the name of the lord now please write this down thank you write this down i appreciate thank you thank you let's get to work thank you praise the name of the lord hallelujah thank you i appreciate you now write this down the highest psychological need we teach this in our school of ministry the highest psychological need of all men please write it and tie it in the name of jesus may you never forget this is the golden rule that governs us the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved accepted celebrated and appreciated please write it down the highest psychological need of all men beloved the need to be accepted the need to be celebrated and the need to be appreciated hallelujah praise the name of the lord are we together now now listen to me sir everyone let her come i don't know her but please come and then you my friend the white man please come let him come to come sir please if you can don't be embarrassed please come come nothing to embarrass you at all please come man let's keep celebrating them just take it easy i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't know that you would need this thank you ma god bless you please come sir please come thank you god bless you thank you thank you please stand keep clapping till i ask you to stop keep clapping don't stop keep clapping now watch this watch this watch this you don't you may not know them and you don't even know what they have done but your clap has fulfilled this law the need whatever it is that you have done what they receive from your club is that i am loved am i right sirs? am i right ma i am accepted is that true i am appreciated and celebrated hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on just listen 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 we're learning something now you come and talk to this woman and tell her you don't like me and see what she will do to you are we together now yes because we have given her a perception that we love you we honor you sir and ma and we ask them to come to this altar and we ask everyone to stand and then to applaud them are we together now chances are that this our mother here and this our uncle here may not hate me easily are you seeing that now why because the memory of my honor fulfilling that psychological condition will not give them the room now imagine let's reverse it imagine that as our mother and our uncle were coming up here we asked them to come out and i started shouting at them respectfully speaking i said i don't know who you are but do you know i'm a man of god hurry up and don't waste my time come and stand here before i curse you now they may keep quiet now watch this and then I tell the man, you come stand, stand. And I push them and push and nobody helps her up. And she stands here. And when I'm done with my example, I say, you can go. And I just push them like I'm pushing animals. Can I tell you this? It is possible that next week you would never see them here again. Now you understand what I say. The highest psychological need of any man, including the one looking at me, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated the need to feel celebrated and the need to feel what's the last one accepted people join occult groups because they want acceptance 
people fight and belong to groups why do people get angry when you don't invite them for festivities because they receive a perception through your non-invitation that you don't place value on them are we together now please let's celebrate our mother thank you sir thank you ma please help them down keep clapping until they go down you've started finish it well thank you thank you thank you god bless you thank you are we together koinonia please sit down let's continue now the psychological build-up of man so the highest psychological need of all men is the need to feel loved or beloved accepted celebrated and appreciated is that true write this down we begin our teaching on pride now before I define pride let me tell you this a very important information pride is rooted in deep insecurity fear powerlessness and unworthiness pride is rooted in the feeling you can add the feeling pride intrinsically pride from a psychological angle is rooted in the feeling of deep insecurity fear a sense of powerlessness and unworthiness 95 percent of all manifestations of pride are a cover-up for these conditions you have to understand this pride is rooted in a deep sense or a deep feeling of insecurity fear powerlessness and unworthiness that means if i feel insecure intrinsically if i live in fear if i feel i am powerless and not in control of people or circumstances if i feel unworthy i will have to devise a psychological way of covering that condition the name of that cover-up is pride are we together now yes so that intrinsically largely so may not be always the case but almost always anywhere you truly find pride behind the scenes is an expression of insecurity an expression of fear an expression of powerlessness or lack of control and an expression of unworthiness so people create that psychological cover they try to assume an attitude of boldness intimidate or bully others but behind the scenes ask those who are legal practitioners ask those who operate as security people all around they will tell you when you catch some of these people who are involved in all kinds of societal violence once you sit with them down after dealing with them punishing them when they are sure that destruction is imminent they would break down and start crying and you now tell them but why do you do this and then they will begin to tell you nobody loves me I came from a background where this so most of that thing is a cover-up an attempt to wrongly manage insecurity an attempt to wrongly manage fear an attempt to wrongly manage a sense of powerlessness and an attempt to manage unworthiness are we together now yes we're dealing with the deceitfulness of pride four or five scriptures and then i will tell you or let me just define pride and then we'll look at these scriptures please write this down three definitions we're looking at pride do not forget our topic tonight the lifting power of true humility the first definition of pride is a lost for the praises of men what is a lost what is lost on 
ungodly inordinate affinity a lust for the praises of men pride number two the second definition a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority don't worry i'll take it again a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity comma importance comma merit or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed in conduct i'll take it one last time pride a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority whether cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct please write it and look up you can see that there are two expressions to this definition on one hand it can be a perception that is cherished in the mind it never finds physical visibility and then the second you can it can be vocally expressed in conduct when pride is expressed we call it boastfulness but just because whether pride is expressed or not pride is pride are we together so a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct let me give you my own definition now the third definition what is pride a feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception or obvious achievements a feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception that means just something that is worked up in your mind or in the presence of obvious achievements a feeling that you are better than others on the strength of your obvious achievement or just something that exists in the realm of your mind so pride the lust for the praises of men number two inordinate opinion of oneself number three the feeling of being better than others the following scriptures number one proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12 very instructive scriptures please let's pay attention the lord is teaching us can we read together as a family of faith if you can see it projected we read one two three before destruction the heart of man is haughty that's another word for pride and before honor is humility wow that means every time you see pride pride is only a john the baptist to something that is coming that before pride before destruction the heart of man is haughty is that true and it says before honor is humility very powerful scripture that anytime you see pride it did not come alone there is something it is dragging with it and what it is dragging is destruction so the end of all who are and remain in pride is destruction scripture number two proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18 the bible again here says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall can you see that now in the mouth of two or three witnesses the bible says a matter is established so pride goes before destruction it means that when satan wants to destroy a man wants to destroy a people the first thing that happens is that he introduces pride to their lives and in that state of pride destruction is beginning to form over their lives and their destinies the third scripture proverbs 29 and verse 23 proverbs 29 and verse 23 i like us to read together if you do not mind ready please read a man's pride shall bring him low but honor 
shall uphold the humble in spirit one more time please a man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit this is very powerful many people today i tell you the truth have destroyed enviable destinies because of this danger and this demon and this cancer of pride it has brought down kings it has brought down nobles it has brought down men of god as it has such potent power to destroy a man's future pride hallelujah when the devil wants to do that the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved to be valued to be celebrated but there are there is men the bible tells us that that state is a state that only leads to destruction let me say this sincerely we live in a celebrity world today we live in a world of superstars nothing wrong with excelling get there it does not matter they just want to get to a position where the whole world can celebrate them in ministry in business in career whatever it is and so people continue to make all kinds of compromises it does not matter what is done or not done the most important thing is this fame i must have it in ministry i found out that when you can prophesy when you can preach well they may say people respect you so it doesn't matter how and where i must make sure that i get to that position most times when people watch a successful person there is this there is this sense of admiration they look at everything they look at your designers if you're wearing one they look at your persona the car they look at everything and most times people just sit and create a world of 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 ambition and lust from what they are seeing and they come up with all kinds of false vows and say i must be like this I must do this I must do that and it becomes a negative motivation negative motivation inordinate affection for the praise of men whether they are lying whether they are flattering you you just want to hear it this was what destroyed Lucifer Lucifer the son of the morning we're going to look at examples of pride from Scripture but this is what destroyed that one's cherub that covereth. When the Lord began to teach me about pride, every day till today and till tomorrow, can I tell you this? Let me challenge you. There are issues that when we are discussing, you can easily say, ah, no, 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 no. When you talk of character and moral excellence, you can say, oh, no, that's, that's me or that that does not concern me when we talk of witchcraft and manipulation oh that does not concern me when we talk about money and other things oh that does not concern me but the subject of pride and humility there is nobody this these are the kind of teachings that there is no tell them it's the kind of teaching that when they are done from the preacher himself to everybody you cry and roll before god and say lord help me because pride is a killer it has such penetrating power the most fortified heart it can creep into that heart until it destroys you can i tell you this for the sake of this lecture tonight i separated my angles of discussing pride in two number one spiritual pride number two the pride of life let me talk about this they are the two aspects of pride that i see that have almost damaged the lives of people why am i teaching this out of love because this is the condition to access exaltation you want to be exalted in this kingdom there is a mystery that controls it let's look at spiritual pride spiritual pride in the book of revelation the bible when john was caught up in the isle of patmos please look up there were seven churches now theologically speaking those were they were real churches like that scattered across asia minor and there were warnings that were given to those churches but prophetically speaking it was a message to the entire church is that true 
and one of the churches please turn with me to revelation chapter 3 from verse 14 one of the churches is called the laudation church the laudation church received an instruction that is applicable for our lives today and for everyone who wants to remain relevant in the program of god relevant in influence relevant and to consistently be exalted it says and unto the angel of the church of the laudicians right these things saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of god uh-huh it says i know thy works so he's cautioning them now that thou art neither cold nor hot i would that thou wert cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and are neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth 17 because thou sayest what made you cold this is the basis thou sayest i am rich and increase with goods i have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked this year you see is about the most painful rebuke of all the seven churches for the rest you will first commend them you have done this except this just work on this but when it came to the laudation church there was no commendation it was the rod immediately thou sayest i am rich i am increased with goods who does this look like in the bible who made such a statement lucifer himself the laudation syndrome is a luciferian syndrome i am rich he says increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched miserable poor blind and naked next verse we're reading to 19 i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mightest be rich and white raiment that thou mightest be cloth and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou may see 19 as many as i love wow can you see that there is a special love he had for the laudation church that was why he didn't even have time to commend anything he just went straight to rebuke them and at the end he said i'm doing this because i love you as many as i love i rebuke and chasten he says be zealous therefore and repent luke chapter 18 from verse 11 jesus taught us a very powerful lesson to describe humility and pride three or four verses full of truth from the lips of the master himself ready please look up the pharisees stood and prayed thus jesus is giving um, a, a parable now to explain something and he spoke about two men one a pharisee one an ordinary person the pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself god i thank thee he said that i am not as the other men are this is a man praying now extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican he's praying next verse i fast twice in a week everybody says spiritual pride i give tithes of all that i possess and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner 14 i tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbled himself shall be exalted jesus is teaching spiritual pride can i tell you this i can tell you by experience and i can tell you from scripture if god does not help you spiritual growth and spiritual excellence can turn and tilt you to the other side of the pendulum and bring your destruction 
when you begin to access revelation and insight when god begins to prosper your spiritual work and us i tell you <clears throat> pride if if god does not help you to create a system where you cry before him daily has destroyed many men of god respectfully speaking this has destroyed many great leaders this has destroyed many great business spiritual progress and many times you can grow in revelation grow in power to the point that you are no longer with us step by step and he's still helping us today spiritual pride the moment you feel you are the only one god is using apostle joshua selman it is only in koinonia god is blessing people apostle joshua selman you know while i was preparing this message i had to put my head and rest and think i have said this to you and i say it out of every sense of responsibility truly without exaggeration now it's even more i manage an average of say 800 plus text messages in a day and many of them like this apostle of the most high god i have searched men of god are you if you actually believe that thing let, i'm talking to myself now if i actually believe that thing i'm not only stupid but i'm under an attack as as funny and childish as what i'm saying is there are some of you who will believe it absolutely and go out of your way to create systems that reinforce those kinds of things many of us have gathered psychophants in our lives today because they have mastered us that this is what we want to hear even if you are entering the pit you want people who gather around you once they can massage your ego they have access to your life access to your inner circle until you they destroy you and they will turn back and show people that this is where he died listen to me you've heard me say this you know you are being transformed by the holy ghost when there is humility connected to your growth the moment you begin to trade humility for revelation you are in trouble now this i say this with every sense of love and respect this is one of the greatest fear for my generation of ministers you see it in africa one of the biggest mistakes especially with the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in africa generally and world over is that the little that god has done and is doing with our lives is so garnished with a lot of pride it even damages the beautiful thing that is there that is not even much relative to what god wants to do are we together chances are that because of what god is doing in a ministry like this and how god continues to glorify himself we can go back and begin to destroy ourselves with that sense of pride how do you know you are walking in pride when you believe listen to me when you believe that there are certain things you are the only one who can do and the only one who can bring is the mistake of elijah Elijah came to God and said, God, every other person has deserted you. Every other person does not like you. I am the only one. That's a nonsense. What are you saying? There are 7,000 others. How many preachers today? We preachers. I don't say them. We preachers. How many of us preachers today actually sit down and believe that without us, God's purposes will fail? Look at that level of pride. There are people who stand and speak as if every other person has backsliding. Every other person does not love the Lord. We must be careful. There is destruction that we are programming. The one who built the church is still alive. And his jealousy will make sure he defends his work to the end. Can I tell you this? As a man of God, I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting people. And God many times opens my eyes and i'm able to see these people they themselves do not know how mighty they are in the spirit i shared with you a story one time that i was pre preaching at a pfn crusade in kano and i was calling people out by word of knowledge ministering to people you know people were watching with wonder the anointing and all kinds of things and then i called this woman out and when the woman came out she was an intercessor and then she told me that every 15 days she finishes her bible a house her bible 15 days without fail 
and yet they are not on air yet they are not the joshua selmans who sit in front and yet we can have the audacity to believe that we are the only ones god is using not so my brothers god has a mighty army some of them mighty and greater than the joshua selmans you celebrate nobody knows them yet some of them are hiding in the school of the spirit god is using our own life to teach them lessons and train them we must have the maturity the wisdom and the spirituality to know this are you learning something tonight yes. spiritual pride people bully one another across the body of christ today with rema revelation many people this is what led them into divination and some of these things now pray from prayer groups you go to different campuses now you see things that make you afraid everybody's trying to search for anything once there is greek hebrew and latin and you conjoin then the spiritual pride that comes from account of prayer prowess once i can pray two hours three hours four hours you can bully others to make it look you are not spiritual then crowd once you have crowd inside and outside we are the only ones god is using brothers and sisters it is not true it is an attack from the pit of hell there is such a thing as spiritual pride the more you see the glory of god can i tell you this the more you are exposed to god i'm telling you the more you see your inadequacy before him and the need to remain humble many times when i enter and i come to sit and i watch people looking at me in my mind i'm just saying oh god someone was at a pastor's conference it's a story that i heard years ago they were at a pastor's conference ministers were praying and our father in the lord baba deboe was there and when it was time to pray mass prayer everybody was praying and then the man had the opportunity to lie down not too far as he said from Baba Deboe and pastors were praying Lord the grace on this ministry it must come upon my life I'm tired of 300 members I'm tired of that's power and when he came close for more than one hour or so he said all that Baba Deboe was saying is mercy oh God mercy oh God mercy oh God that's how you know people who have grown others who just came Lord fire Lord bring partners now why do I have this quality of sheep bring people who can help me and and change this and stop this work from being hard someone else is crying and say lord mercy keep me to the end mercy the humility it takes to finish can i tell you this it is a caution that god gave me and i continue to obtain grace from god to stand in partnership with the holy spirit that as he opens new graces and new vistas of spiritual reality that we are patient with people today many people come who are just starting ministry and they come apostle and sometimes they almost want to worship you can i tell you this spiritual pride works in two angles there is the one you create the people who praise you by yourself you praise yourself but there, there are others you will not create it but when you see it you will sap that you will enjoy it like squeezing an orange until there is nothing left. it's still pride there are times that you have to go out of your way to thank them and say thank you for this but please be careful there are things people want to do in my life today if i'm to allow people to do everything they want to do in my life it will almost become another religion people will now almost worship joshua selman ah may i not live to see that day oh in the name of Jesus Christ looking at me now and following online many of you the devil is already programming this spiritual pride that's what has driven many people to go on 40 days dry 10 days dry you ask them why they tell you no we started ministry with these guys so I can't remain like this and you think it's a very nice motivation no i can't be some of you are listening to me some of you that's what even brought you here and god is looking at the corruption in your heart there's nothing wrong with prayer and fasting don't get me wrong but that that motif is already dead it's already gone spiritual pride 
why do you think people go to dabble into all sorts of demonic things it is because people are looking for a name spiritual pride hello scriptures exalt us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you